Welcome. This video covers the basics of statistical inference. Hopefully you're pretty excited about all of the neat things that we've been able to do in this course. We can take raw data, bring it into SAS, we can manipulate it, and then we can do some of that fun exploratory data analysis stuff where we try to summarize the data and gain some meaningful insights. Well, the next step is really to do some sort of statistical analysis on that data, be it trying to do what we call inference or trying to do what we call prediction. And so we're going to just talk about the ideas behind inference and prediction in the next two videos. Big picture wise, what are we trying to do with statistics and the analyses? Well, statistics is just this overall methodology for dealing with data, understanding the relationships you see, and trying to learn from data. And in this process, we usually are going to have what we call a response variable that's going to characterize the performance of our study in some way. And you might have more than one of these, but we'll just focus on having one response variable. And what we try to do is take the other variables that we collect, which you might call predictors, explanatory variables, or feature variables, there's a bunch of names for them. We're going to try to take those variables that we collect and relate them to that response in some way. And in that way, we're going to hopefully learn from our data. We're going to learn about either the relationships that we see there, or we're going to be able to predict our response variable uh, in a useful way. And so really, there are three major goals that you might think about in this kind of setting where we have a response variable of interest. By the way, you might call this supervised learning because we have a variable that characterizes our performance and we're sort of trying to learn and and optimize with respect to that. So we generally have three goals uh, when this is the case. We want to maybe just describe the data that we have, and that's not very common, but maybe you have what you might refer to as a census. So you have the data on everybody that you actually care about, and you just want to describe the relationships you see. The other two cases are much more common. That would be the case of trying to do statistical inference. And this is where you try to take the um, predictors and figure out which ones are related to the response variable. So which ones of these are important in terms of that response variable? The other major goal is to do prediction. And that's where you take your um, explanatory variables or your predictor variables, and you try to create some function of those to predict that response variable. And usually you want to have some error bounds on those predictions so that you have an idea how close you should expect your prediction to be from a future observation or the overall mean of the response variable at that setting, for instance. And so again, what we're going to do with the next two videos is just get the ideas of statistical inference and the ideas of prediction down, because otherwise when we go to do our correlation and regression analyses that we're going to um, demonstrate here, we're not really going to have an idea what we're even trying to get at. So the point of these videos is just to get us the basic, very, very basic ideas of statistical inference and prediction. Let's just do an example to get an idea of it. So we're going to deal with this wine data set that we played around with before. And so this wine data set has information about wines from Portugal. And there are a bunch of different explanatory variables or predictor variables um, created by looking at the physiochemical properties of our wines. And the overall goal, the response variable that we wanted to talk about for this is going to be this quality variable. So this is me uh, measured by some experts, I believe. Um, and it's just a measure of how good the wine actually is. So for the purposes of this video where we're trying to talk about statistical inference, our goal is going to be just very basic. Can we determine the relationship between the average quality of red wines versus the average quality of white wines? And we'll talk a little bit more about why we are focusing on this idea of an average in just a minute. Let's remind ourselves exactly what that data looks like. Um, here is the data with uh, all the variables um, laid out here. And the ones that we're going to focus on for this particular basic statistical inference um, analysis would be this quality variable, which is our response variable, along with this wine type variable, our predictor variable. And again, what we want to do is try to say, can we make some statement or claim about this quality based off of the differences we see in the wine type variable? So how do we formalize that question of interest? That's, that's really a, an actual actually kind of a difficult question to do and answer. Because really what we want to say is something like, red wines tend to have a higher quality than white wines. Or vice versa, maybe white wines tend to have a qual higher quality than red wines. But how do you actually put that into a meaningful analysis? Like, what does it mean to just say that red wines are better than white wines? Because certainly there are going to be some white wines that would be better than red, and there are going to be some red that are better than white. So I can't just make this sort of blanket statement that red is better than white. And how do we, so how do we actually formalize this? Well, since these distributions of the variables overlap, 
right? So some of the red variables are going to be better than the white, but some of the white are going to be better than the red. So the distribution of these variables is actually going to overlap. Rather than making a statement about the entire distribution, what we tend to do is make a, a statement about some summary measure about that distribution. And in this case, it's actually a little bit different than what we talked about in, uh, with our data and summarizing our data. When you summarize your sample data, you call those summaries statistics. When you summarize a population, you call those summaries parameters. And so what we ideally want to do is actually make statements and claims about our parameters, the true underlying parameters that represent all of the wines that we could ever um, observe. So out of all Portuguese wines that I could observe, I want to say that on average or something like that, the red wines are better than the white wines. And so um, again, what we try to do here is boil our question down into something that we can actually make statements and claims about, in this case, a summary measure like a parameter such as a, a population mean. And again, uh, this idea that these distributions overlap, I could draw you a quick picture of this. So if I put my quality on my x-axis here, I can think about the distribution of, say, red wines looking something like this. And this isn't really what it's going to look like, but we can just imagine. So that might be the distribution of red wines, which means that most red wines are sort of ha have a quality that is usually observed between those two dashed lines, for instance. Well, maybe the distribution of white wines looks something like this. And so again, there are going to be some um, red wines that are going to be better than white wines, but there's going to be some white wines that are better than red wines. So how do we actually make statements or claims? How do we figure out how to, how to ask our question here? Well, we're going to ask questions about summaries about these distributions. So we would know that the mean of this red distribution would fall right around here at the peak of that curve, because then we have half over here and half over here. We're symmetric. So this would be our mean of that population. And similarly, right about here would be the mean of the, of the white population. And so we could actually start thinking about, well, in this case, one of the means is bigger than the other mean. So that is a statement or claim that we could sort of go after and try to investigate more easily. And that's exactly what we're going to do with our inference ideas here. Okay, so we're going to look at the difference of averages. And um, when, again, when we're talking about the population level averages rather than the sample level averages, um, we don't use the same symbols. So here we're going to use this Greek symbol mu to represent a population average. And we might want to then make statements or claim about mu white versus mu red. The average quality of all Portuguese wines that were white versus all Portuguese wines that are red. These are not quantities that we can actually observe. These are just theoretical population level values. And since we have these two means that we care about, one way to talk about them and their relationship would be to say, take the difference of those means. And so this would perhaps be our inferential objective. I want to look at mu diff, the difference between the mean for reds and the mean for white. Now, again, what we actually have to work with here is sample data. So we assume that our sample data comes from the population that we want to talk about. That is all Portuguese wines. This is the population of interest. So our sample data is going to come from that. And what we need to do is use our sample data to then try to make a statement or claim about these population level values. So first thing we need to do is really estimate those population values with our sample data. And so what we might do here would be create our estimate or estimator of this quantity using the sample means. That's a very common thing to do. But uh, we can't just take the sample mean data and look at it and just say, oh, the sample mean for red was less than the sample mean for white. So I can just say the population means are different too. And the reason we can't just say that is because these estimators, these values that we get from our sample are going to vary between samples. So if I got a, uh, another sample of Portuguese wines and I found the same exact difference that you see here, I'm not going to get the same value every time. And so we need to take into account that, um, that variability that we see inherent with data, and we do that via probability and statistics. Okay, so that's all high-level stuff, um, just sort of the ideas of what we're trying to do with statistical inference. When we actually go to make our statements and claims and, and do this inference, there are two major methods that we use to do it. One is called a confidence interval. And the main goal here is just to get a range of values for that parameter of interest. So what I would be trying to do is take my data and try to give me a range of values that I'm confident will capture the difference in means. 
And alternatively, I can do a hypothesis test. Here, I would assume some value, some population values. So I might assume that that true mean is zero, that there is no difference. And then I might see if that data can refute the assumption that I've made there. And uh, we'll cover each one of these just very briefly here. Let's start with the confidence interval. Again, the goal here is just to give a range of values that we're confident will contain that parameter of interest. This is beyond us for this course, but what we're going to, what you would do is you would use the distribution of your statistic, which is called a sampling distribution, to try to figure out what that interval should be. If I wanted to make inference um, for this particular problem, this wine data problem, I can use what's called PROC T test. PROC T test is going to allow us to make inference for one or two population means. And there are a lot of assumptions that are going to go into um, whether or not this procedure and the output you get are reasonable. We're going to gloss over all of that. So all we need to do here is say the variable I want to investigate is quality. And we saw this class statement before. Class statements allow us to sort of usually um, do analyses and summaries by every setting of a variable that we give it. So here the type variable is red and white. So I'm saying basically analyze this quality variable for red versus white. That's essentially what this code is doing. And so if we look at the output here, um, if you actually wanted to create a confidence interval and figure out where it is on this output, this is the actual confidence interval for the difference in population in population means. And so the statement we could make based off of this would be something like, we're 95% confident, confident the population difference in average quality between red and white wines is between minus 0.287 and minus 0.195. Now, since this difference does not contain zero, zero is not a reasonable value for the um, difference of these means, which means that we can conclude that there is a difference between those population means. So that is the basic idea of doing a confidence interval and just roughly how you would interpret it. This word confident is, uh, it's very heavy. There's a lot behind it. And again, it's a little bit beyond us at this point, but you would learn about this in some of our courses you might take. Let's just do a quick example of a hypothesis test. So hypothesis test, remember that the goal there is to make some assumptions about your population and then see if your data can refute those assumptions. The assumption that we usually make for the, the um, derivation or for the actual analysis is what we call a null hypothesis assumption. And this is usually a status quo, like no difference, nothing new is happening type hypothesis. And what we hope is that our data, again, is going to give us evidence against that hypothesis, that the data that we actually see would be very unlikely to have been seen if that hypothesis were true. The most common way to actually make judgments about the null and alternative hypotheses that you would make would be to use a p-value. P-values, like the word confidence, um, are very deep. They have a lot going on with them and a lot of ways that people misunderstand them. We definitely don't have the time to cover them in depth here, but just understand that p-values are going to give us a way to judge the reasonableness of the data that we saw under the assumption of the null hypothesis. So if our p-value is very small, that means that the data we saw or something like it is probably pretty unlikely based off that null hypothesis, which would give us then evidence that that null hypothesis might be false. All right, so to get the analysis here, we actually would use the exact same PROC T test code. We don't need to change anything there. We just need to look at a different part of the output. And the part of the output we would look at here might be what you see down here, this row. And this would allow us to look at this p-value. This p-value would, would allow us to say that if we assume that the average quality is the same for both red and white wines, and we look at what we actually observed, so this was the difference that we actually observed between the average qualities in our sample, well, the probability of observing that or something worse is very, very small. In fact, it's less than 0.0001. Now, there are a bunch of other assumptions that are going to go into the calculation of that p-value, again, beyond us at this point. But since that p-value is very, very small, that gives us evidence that that assumption we've made may be false. So we should reject that assumption in favor of the alternative that those means do in fact differ. So that's the basic idea of a hypothesis test. Okay, so we got a lot of big ideas in this video, but again, we're just hoping that with this video, you can have a decent idea of when we look at the correlation analysis and the regression analyses that we do, that you can have a rough idea what's going on um, with that output. Otherwise, 
there's really no point in learning about this part. Next up, we'll look at the idea of doing prediction as well.